Hello, welcome to the Mythology Manifest. So I am moving on to the Trojan War and the Iliad section of my videos, and today I will be focusing on the backstory of the war, which includes prophecies, the gods, and a golden apple. I hope you enjoy it. This story begins with Zeus, the king of the gods, who is attempting to cheat on his wife Hera once again. This time it was with the child of Oceanus and Tethys. She was the Oceanid Thetis. Just as she agreed to be with Zeus, he was told a prophecy by the titaness of prophecies, Phoebe. She said that any child of Thetis would be greater than their father, and this scared Zeus, so he gave up his pursuit of Thetis. In despair and heartbreak, she went and hid at the bottom of the ocean, swearing off all men forever. This didn't last very long for Thetis, as there was a mortal king of Thessaly named Peleus, who found her beauty magical and desperately wanted her as a wife. He asked her multiple times to marry him, and she had refused, even though he said he didn't care about the prophecy surrounding her and any children that she would have. When she retreated to the bottom of the ocean, Peleus dived into the sea and held his breath longer than was humanly possible. He dragged her back to the surface, and seeing how persistent he was, Thetis agreed to marry him and invite all of the gods to the wedding, but she wasn't overly pleased about it. Around the same time, Queen Hecabe of Troy had just given birth to a new son. Before she had chance to name her son, a priestess of Apollo, called Cassandra, came to her and said that she must kill the child, as she had just received a prophecy saying that if he lived, he would bring about the fall of Troy. Unfortunately, because she had refused to marry Apollo, Cassandra had been cursed so that no one would listen to her accurate prophecies. Hecabe said that she would have the child killed, but instead left her son out in the woods for the gods to decide his fate. The young prince of Troy was found a few hours later by a shepherd. The shepherd recognised the blanket he was wrapped in as one from the palace of Troy and knew he must be a royal baby. He picked him up and decided to raise the child, naming him Paris, meaning backpack. We'll come back to Paris later. The timelines get messed up again in this myth, and somehow the wedding of Peleus and Thetis takes about 19 years or so to plan, by which time they had had a few children together who had died and one who survived, called Achilles. I will discuss his miracle birth in a later video. When they finally came to get married, Peleus and Thetis invited many mortals and all of the gods. That was all of the gods except for the goddess of strife and discord, Eris as it would be bad luck to invite her to a wedding. But Eris was an angry and vengeful goddess who turned up midway through the ceremony, incredibly angry that she had not been invited. For those of you that thinks this sounds familiar, it is actually the basis for the evil fairy or Maleficent crashing the christening of Sleeping Beauty. They all tried to apologise to Eris for not inviting her, but she dismissed their words and said she had a gift for them. She threw a golden apple into the centre of the room, which became known as the Apple of Discord. The apple had a word written on it, Callisti, which translates to English as for the fairest. Eris said that the gods must decide who got the apple, which one of them was the most beautiful. This apple poisoned the mood of the entire wedding. Again, another basis for a fairy tale, the poisoned apple in Snow White. With that, Eris left immediately, and three goddesses went for the apple, each believing themselves to be the fairest. The first was Hera, the queen of the gods. The second was Aphrodite, the goddess of love. And the third was a little bit of a surprise. It was Athena, the goddess of wisdom. This is a surprise because most thought Athena would value intelligence and modesty over vanity, but apparently not. The three goddesses turned to Zeus and said he must pick for them. None of these women were the type you wanted to get on the bad side of, so Zeus protested, saying he would be a biased judge as he was married to Hera. He said that they would pick a random mortal to decide for them. Zeus picked a young shepherd boy who lived on the outskirts of Troy. His name was Paris, and immediately the three goddesses went to find him. They appeared before Paris and told him who they were and that he must pick who was the fairest. They handed him the golden apple and told him to give it to one of them. 
He was about to pick when Hera tried to bribe him. She said she would give him the throne of many kingdoms and riches beyond his dreams. Then Athena tried bribery. She told Paris that she would give him all of the intelligence, wisdom and battle skills that he may win the kingdoms and riches on his own. Paris then turned to Aphrodite, awaiting her bribe. The goddess held out her fair palm and a vision appeared above it. A vision of the most beautiful woman Paris had ever seen. She was actually the most beautiful mortal woman the world had ever seen. Aphrodite said that if Paris picked her as the fairest, she would make this woman, who was called Helen and was the queen of Sparta, fall in love with him. Paris instantly gave the apple to Aphrodite, and to be honest, I think he would have picked Aphrodite anyway. After all, she was the goddess of beauty, and the apple was for whoever was the most beautiful. With that, Athena and Hera disappeared in angry blasts, while Aphrodite stayed with Paris long enough for him to gather a few things, and then she whisked him to Sparta, where Helen ruled with her husband, Menelaus. The goddess worked her love voodoo, and Helen fell madly in love with Paris. Together, they fleed back to Troy. Paris took Helen to meet the shepherd who had raised him. When he found out what Paris had done, the shepherd took him to the palace of Troy and told his mother and father, King Priam and Queen Hecabe, who he was, and asked them to take him in for protection, as Menelaus had a bit of a reputation of not taking kindly to those who stole from him. The king and queen of Troy welcomed Paris back with open arms, and Helen of Sparta became Helen of Troy. Little did they know that when Helen had married Menelaus, all of her other suitors had signed a treaty saying that if she was ever kidnapped, they would join forces to bring her back to Sparta. What a convenient treaty, right? Anyway, the leader of this treaty was King Agamemnon of Mycenae, who was more ruthless than his brother Menelaus. He was trying to take over as many of the Greek islands as he could, and he summoned all of the people who signed the treaty, including Achilles, and they took to the waters sailing for Troy with Athena, Hera and other gods on their side. Troy were expecting them, and they had Aphrodite and Apollo on their side, as well as other gods, so the armies were evenly matched. And that was how the Trojan War began. Let me know down in the comments or on Twitter, which I have left a link to in the description, which god or goddess you would have given the apple to. I hope you enjoyed this video. For my next one, I will be carrying on from this point in the story. Please like, comment or subscribe if you found this video enjoyable, interesting and informative. Together we are keeping classics alive. I will see you next time on the Mythology Manifest.